Hello, Claire here. Today as a princess because I'm dollifying Nintendo princesses. Oh yeah, brick emotion. All three princesses have a pretty standard princessy attire. Does that mean they were easy peasy to dollify, you know, because I could just reuse all of the Disney princesses gowns? Of course not. Dollifying is basically never that easy. I had to customize the pieces quite a bit. I'll show you what I mean with Princess Peach. Her ball gown is from Ariel. Thank you! <clears throat> and was the easiest to make. It only required painting on some dark pink details. I even left the white printing. I found it gave the ball gown a nice touch. Moving on to the torso, you'll probably notice the blue gem first. And while it was a challenge to find a gem that would fit her, both on the torso and on the crown, but I'll get to that later, it didn't keep me awake at night. I was mostly concerned with the gloves. You see, I can't paint the hands. Well, I mean, technically I could. But then I risk damaging the paint job every single time I give her something to hold. So I chose to paint over the Cinderella torso, thank you very much, <laughs> which surprisingly I don't have that many copies of. Also surprising was that the most effort went into the crown. The Nintendo crowns are spiky and decorated with jewels. The Lego crowns have rounded edges and no jewels. They even have small bumps, which I'm convinced are there only so I can glue some jewels onto them. Mm -hmm. But I have a craft knife and I know how to use it. So I cut off the bumps and the round things. Ouch! Sharp! And I glued the crystals on. Those are the same type of crystals I used on the torso. Mm-hmm. See now the connection? Oh, and the hairpiece needed a hole so the tiara would have any chance of connecting. And you can say what you want about Minidol Peach's outfit, but this crown is simply spot on. In fact, I think the whole doll looks great and is very recognizable. The only thing missing is an accessory, um, hmm. How about a pink umbrella slash parasol? Hagrid, you don't mind, do you? Hmm. Thanks. There, now she's perfect. The only thing still left to do is to put her in front of her castle. It's just a small, flat version of her residence, but I love it as a backdrop. So. Stay here. As much as Peach is pink, Daisy is yellow. I chose to go with a significantly lighter yellow for her mini doll version, mainly because I wanted to avoid painting the whole ball gown. Yellow is not the friendliest color to paint with. It was so much easier to just use Belle's skirt piece. Thank you! I'll get you another one, promise! <sighs> I removed Belle's golden printing and I added a white daisy-like nail stamp in its place, on the front of the dress. The torso presented me again with the gloves problem. I wasn't gonna use yet another Cindy torso, those are expensive, but these friends ones were cheap. A few arm swaps later, I had a base with white gloves and a naked neck. And so the painting began. I was basically done with it when I convinced myself the contrast between light yellow and white isn't noticeable enough. So I painted a border. That wasn't fiddly to do at all. Mm -mm. But I'm glad I did it. Daisy got the largest smile because she seems to be the one having the most fun in the games out of the princesses. Although my submersion into the Nintendoverse started just a few months ago with our first ever console, 
so I don't claim to be an expert on the topic. Back to Daisy. Or better to say to Daphne, who I need to steal the hairpiece from. Your sacrifice will be remembered. It still needs some work, like a mini pinhole and a hairband transcoloration. Boom! This crown went through the same process as Peach's in regards to the cutting and gluing on a pearl. However, I also had to paint petals around the pearl part to give it that extra boost of accuracy. Now you know what this outfit definitely needs more of? White flowers, of course. She reminds me of spring, laughter and joy. That is to say, I like it. And she can spread the cheerfulness from Peach's castle while they wait for the final dollification today. Rosalina wears a delightful tealish blue dress which required minimal adjustments. I just love that. I took two Elsas, merged them into one and grabbed the resulting dress. Ah, the cold never bothered you anyway. I only painted the little triangle at the bottom of her skirt and the sleeves. All of the other details felt pretty magical to me, so, you know, for Rosalina, they could stay. After all, she seems to be something like a magical goddess or something. I chose to paint her gem onto the star instead of a star around a gem, because I felt like it. What can I do? I love to experiment. Her hair is the part of the mini doll that I dislike the most. I mean, it's a nice hairstyle. It's just not very similar to the original one. Fortunately, I once again made a fantastic tiara, so everything comes together quite nicely. I will admit, the doll looks fairly similar to Elsa, but I'll also argue Elsa would have no problems winning a Rosalina lookalike contest. So there. And here, this magic wand will help us differentiate them. Oh, and what's this? Aluma came to say hi. Hi, you may follow us to the castle if you want. Although I love all three of them, I love how Daisy turned out the most. And what about you? Do you have a favorite? Or have I failed at dollifying them all completely? Ahem. I would like my clothes back. As would I. Me too. And don't forget the hair. People, chillax. Do you really think I would paint a piece I haven't got duplicates of? Again? Here you go. And I can put the new princesses away into my special display case. Until the next time you click on one of my videos. Bye-bye.